Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Audit and Governance Committee on the 17th of October. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, we'll go straight into the agenda. Um, apologies for absence. I've received apologies from Councillor Peter Thurgood, Councillor Daniel Maycock, uh, and from one of our officers, Andrew Wood, who is unwell. Uh, wish him well. Um, and Andrew will be stepping in uh, to present his report shortly, um, just to let everybody know. Um, I've got uh, next agenda item is minutes of the previous meeting. Um, can I get a mover and seconder for the for them? Moved by Councillor Clark, seconded by Councillor Doyle. Thank you. Uh, any declarations of interest? There are none. That brings us into the agenda proper. So, um, item number four is um, update from our external auditors. Um, and I will hand over to Laurel in for this. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's a relatively brief update from us. Um, we were hoping to be in a position to sort of sign off the council's accounts this month, um, and that's what we've been working towards with finance. Um, so just to say that there's no real concerns coming out of the audit, and we are working through our kind of final uh, quality control processes, final few queries, um, but there has been a slight hiccup in that we're now not expecting assurances from the auditor of the Staffordshire Pension Fund until um, the end of November at the earliest. So we won't be able to actually sign the opinion until that point. Um, but that's the only real update at this point, to be honest. So, and we'll bring you a more formal one in due course. Okay, thank you. Has anybody got any questions for Lauren on the report? No? Okay, thank you for that update. Um, Agenda item number five is the uh, Internal Audit Quarter 2 Progress Report and External Quality Assessment Action Plan. Uh, I'll hand over to Andrew for this one. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll try and do so justice to, uh, to Andrew's um, report. Uh, I, I will advise committee I may not be in a position to answer questions um, if they're in detail, but I will assure the committee that they'll be fed back to Andrew and they'll respond in, in, in due course if anything comes out of it. So this is um, progress report as at quarter two and an update on the external quality assessment action plan. Um, members will note that in appendix one, the progress for this quarter uh, has only achieved 50% of, of the audit plan. However, I'd ask the committee to note that three reviews that were deferred from the previous financial year have been completed in this time uh, and final reports issued. For surety, uh, all of the work has been, been allocated and um, start dates have been agreed with both management and with our contractor BDO who, who are delivering the audits. So Andrew is confident that we will be on track uh, during quarter three, which is, which is a positive. Um, Committee last time asked to uh, see more in detail around outstanding uh, audit recommendations. This has been included um, in, in Appendix 1, and I think it's pleasing to note that the, the number of outstanding actions has reduced, and the trend looks to be continuing to go downwards, which I think is, is positive um, and a positive uh, endorsement that the organisation takes um, outstanding audit recommendations uh, seriously. The um, the, the, the public sector in, internal audit standards um, within uh, Appendix 2 details that Andrew's made really good progress with A, the recommendations and, e also, and, and also the advisory uh, recommendations that were put in um, post the, the assessment last year. Um, I don't think there is anything, there's certainly nothing in the report that flags any alarms or anything. Um, it is in contravention, which again is a is a, is a positive. If the committee has any uh, any questions, I will either attempt to answer them or, or get a formal response in, in due course. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, has anybody got any questions, comments? There are none. Okay. Uh, thank you for that, Andrew. Um, that brings us to agenda item. Oh, sorry, no, that doesn't. I'm skipping ahead slightly. <laughs> so we've got some uh, we've got some recommendations. The recommendation that the committee notes the report, um, the internal audit quarterly report, and the external quality assessment action plan. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that? Moved by Councillor Clark, seconded by Councillor Doyle. All those in favour? 
That is unanimous and carried. Thank you, everybody. Now we'll move on to uh, agenda item number six, um, which is the review of the annual report on the Treasury Management Service and actual prudential indicators. And I'll hand over to Joe for this one. Thank you. Um, so the purpose of this report today is for Audit and Governance Committee to review the annual report on the Treasury Management Service and actual prudential indicators for 22-23 following this report being um, approved at Council on the 19th of September. Um, and members are asked to consider the report and highlight any proposed changes for recommendation to Cabinet. So the Treasury Management Code of Practice requires that the Council nominate an appropriate committee to scrutinise its Treasury Management activities and at its meeting on the 23rd of February 2010, Council approved that this committee scrutinise the strategy and policies as well as receiving regular monitoring reports. So in compliance with the above, a copy of the annual report is uh, attached at Annex 1. Um, just as a couple of key um, areas to highlight, the report is a statutory requirement. Um, it can, includes the prudential indicator actuals which require council approval and demonstrates favourable results for the Treasury Service for the year. The councillors complied with the professional code, statutes and guidance, and there are no issues to report regarding non-compliance with the approved prudential indicators. Cabinet has received quarterly Treasury management updates as part of the financial health check reports and all of the reporting requirements to council with, were complied with during the year, the annual Treasury strategy in advance of the year, the mid-year Treasury update report and this annual review following the end of the year. The Treasury management function achieved an outturn investment income of 1.6 million compared to an original budget of 121k last year. This was due to investment balances being higher than budgeted, mainly due to reprofiling on capital schemes and of course the average interest rates which rose significantly during the year. We also received £458,000 in dividends from our property fund investments compared to a budget of 420k and so favourable results throughout the year. Uh, happy to take any questions? 